BFF. My heart is to empower and equip hardworking, purpose-driven women just like you to take care of yourself so that you can go out into your world and serve and love from that overflow. Oh my gosh, you guys. So today's topic is like, it's such a good one. It's such a good one because when I started to see the idea of work-life balance in a different way, oh my gosh, it changed everything in my life. Now, Today, so I kind of gave a little spoiler alert. Today's topic is instead of work-life balance, try this. And we're going to talk about why work-life balance truly isn't realistic. I want to give you a new perspective to consider that rocked my world. And at the end, I want to give you a couple of examples that are like real life, real world examples to help you walk away and then implement this idea into your life. So let's dive in. So for so long, you guys, I'm sure you've heard the phrase work-life balance, and I don't know about you, but for me, it leaves me feeling like I'm always missing the mark. When I try to balance my work and my life, it simply just makes my plate feel very full all across the board. And the result for me truly has been seasons of burnout, overwhelm. And I really started to feel like I was doing this wrong. <laughs> especially when I moved out of the classroom and into working full-time uh, on my own business and working from home. Uh, I just realized that work tends to be a part of my life. Like there's a lot of uh, wovenness of work into my life and my life into my work. And so for me, there's not like this definitive clock in, clock out. And much of my work is actually shown through my day-to-day -day living. So for me, I'm like, how in the world can I draw that line and separate the two? Because when I was a teacher, there was more of a definitive line. And if that's you, if you have the type of work or career that allows you to draw a definitive line between work and life, this is still a good episode for you. I promise you, you're going to gain stuff from it. Um, but I feel like if you've ever desperately tried to find that idea of balance in your life and likely failed miserably, you know how hard it is to try to essentially keep those scales even. When we talk about balance, that's what I, I envision, like a scale in front of me. And I'm like, I'm trying to balance the scales and keep them even. But here's the truth, you guys. All the important pieces of your life, they're never going to be equal. Seasons change where one thing might have to become more of a priority than the other thing. Um, day to day looks different based on how you're doing internally, right? And so, and then there's like so many external factors that that we can't even like, we don't even have time to dig into that. But truthfully, it's never gonna be equal. And I hope that already lets you like, oh, like a breath of fresh air that like, oh my gosh, it doesn't have to be balanced. So last fall, I heard a podcaster. She was um, at the time in a very new season of motherhood. And she was talking about how she broke up with this idea of balance and adopted a new way of living. And she called it integration. And from there, I had a big light bulb moment. It was like a literal aha. And ever since it's given me personally so much freedom, but also ownership in how I show up, what I allow onto my personal plate, and then how much weight I give to the various parts of my day-to-day -day or of what gets put on my plate. It has me asking more and more frequently, what matters most, Britt? And I'm going to encourage you throughout today to start asking yourself that question, what matters most? And then from there, it allows me the opportunity to put those answers on display in my own life. And I hope for you when you, you're done with this episode that you ask yourself that question, but dang, that maybe you have the boldness and the audacity to actually put those answers on display. So I promise to dive into like this like super secret idea. But first, what's actually not working when we say balance, okay? I have five things that are not working. So number one, I think when we say balance, it becomes synonymous with equal or even. And like I said, it, I get this idea of like a scale and I have like work on one side and life on the other. And I'm trying to make sure that they get equal parts, but there's only 24 hours in a day. And if I am in a really busy season of work, then there's a lot of, of weight on this side and maybe life doesn't get equal weight. And similarly, maybe I'm in a season where my family really needs me to show up. And so this other side gets a little less. So it's synonymous with equal and even, which really isn't accurate in the way we slice our life. Number two is that balance 
it separates work from life. It gives us this idea that work and life are separate. But like I said before, a lot of the work I do is woven into my life and vice versa. A lot of my life is woven in, woven into my work. And the same might be true for you. Number three, balance makes this assumption that when we say work, we're saying it's hard or it's laborious. And life is this like fun, relaxing thing. It gives us like a, an almost like an on off switch sort of idea. And I think that that's not working. Um, balance number four can lead to overwhelm and burnout. Hi, <laughs> been there, done that. Probably made a t-shirt out of it. When we try to make everything important and everything have equal weight, none of it's important and none of it gets weight. It just becomes overwhelming and we end up burning out. And number five, balance for me is very rigid and it makes it hard to shift from season to season or day to day when, like I said, maybe work looks really heavy in this season, depending on your job. Maybe, you know, like end of the school year could be really heavy for a teacher or testing time could be heavy for a teacher. Maybe if you're in like accounting and taxes, this time of year, I'm, I'm filming this in spring of 2023. So this time of year could be really hard and heavy and balance assumes that everything is the same. So that's what's like not working when I think about balance, but I want you to kind of consider this in my whole life, bear with me, I've been surrounded by music, my dad, was a band director. Um, both my parents are musicians. I was in music growing up. I've been surrounded by it my whole life. My husband's a musician. And so the, this analogy really hits home for me. So let me try to explain just in case you're not a musician, but hopefully it makes some sense. So when I think about music, there's no way you guys that you would balance everything that's being played, sang, drummed, etc. That would be just like a lot of noise and it would get loud really quick. My husband and I, Charlie, we went to a live recording recently for one of our favorite groups. It was pretty cool. Um, and they were like literally live recording this, this um, album. And we got to be there as they were balancing the music in real, real time. So they had us put on these headphones and like they were talking through them to us. And we could kind of hear what was going on as they were adjusting the sound levels and the music in real time. And when they use the term balance, when they're balancing it all out for production for an album, not every note or instrument carries equal weight. And in this case, I guess, equal sound. What they do is they blend the music, they find harmonies and balances so that it's enjoyable to listen to, so that you hear the right notes when you need to, so that you can understand important lyrics, and really so that it's enjoyable on the ear. Like I said, it'd get really loud and just kind of chaotic if everything was the same level. So this is kind of how I think about work and life. I think about it as a blending rather than a balancing act. So I wanna talk about like the difference, like what blending does over balance. So before I said that balance is like synonymous with equal or even, with blending, it allows work and life to coexist. In balance, we separate work and life. They're like two separate things. And with blending, we're allowed to combine priorities and it allows you to take inventory, like I said at the top, of what matters most. So there might be, you might have a priority of your family and you also have a priority to do great at your job. And this allows you to combine those priorities and not have to pick one or the other, but figure out what matters most and make those your best yeses. The third one I said about balance was that it assumes that work is this like hard labor and life becomes fun and relaxing. But when we blend, we allow work to be fulfilling and also challenging. And it, we also recognize when we blend that life it can be both. It can be really hard in some seasons. Maybe you're caring for a parent or you just had your first baby and like life just seems like cray cray. <laughs> it's like, what? Like, this is not how I, how life was like literally uh, 24 hours ago. And there's times where it's challenging and hard, but life is also precious and enjoyable. And there's beautiful memories that you can make while you're alive. And so it, blending allows it to be both. It's this idea of like work can be both challenging and fulfilling, fun and hard and sticky. 
And life can also be all of those same things too. Before I said that balance can lead to burnout, overwhelm, because everything seems to matter. So then like nothing seems to matter and it just feels like your plate's so full. I've totally been there. So with blending, the way I see it is that it empowers you to be present where your feet are, but also without overdoing it. It makes me take honest inventory of like, am I present in what I'm doing? And am I like going towards the end of edge of burnout? Like, because maybe I'm like a little over present. It makes me take inventory. My friend, she's amazing. She has this really awesome idea about being present where your feet are. And she has different shoes. She's a mama. She's a business owner. She's just, she's all the things. And she wears so many hats. So what she wants to be most is present where her feet are. So when she's with her kids, she has a certain pair of shoes that she wears. And that signals to her brain, this is mom time. When she's on date night, she has another pair of shoes she wears. When she goes out to her retreats and um, and coaches people, she wears a different pair of shoes. And so she has different shoes that she designates to where she wants to be present and what that role is, what hat she's wearing. And I love this idea because that to me is like a picture of what blending can look like for someone where it empowers you to be present where your feet are, but also like, Hey, have I only been wearing these shoes lately? Maybe I should try on these shoes, right? Like get some dust off this pair and put them back on. Maybe that looks like you've spent a lot of time with your kids, but when's the last time you went on a date night with your spouse, right? So I love this idea of blending because we can really start to ask the honest questions. And then lastly, I said that balance is rigid and it makes it hard to shift from season to season. But with blending, we recognize that not every day, not every season, not every year is going to look the same. And so it's more fluid. It's more organic. Uh, I just made up a word. It's more organic. Um, versus being rigid. So instead of considering how I can pile more onto that plate, more onto the scale and try to balance it all out uh, and make sure that everything's equally weighed in, blending simply allows me the freedom to take inventory and ownership of what actually gets placed on my plate. And then I make sure the things that matter, they truly matter. So let me, before I wrap up, give you a couple examples of how blending could look in your life. So I picked a like work marriage idea. So for example, you, you love your job. Okay. And you also recognize that you want to pour intentionally into your marriage. So here's a little scenario. Maybe you give six hours of your best focus to work today. And then you log off intentionally because you know, if you just keep pushing more hours, you could work more, but if you keep pushing, you're going to be exhausted, burnt out, tired. You won't have any more left in the tank for the spouse who you want to be intentional for. So instead of pushing yourself to the point of like, I can't even see straight anymore, you give your best focus to work, log off, and then clean the kitchen, prep an awesome meal for your husband. And the time that you allot to being present and intentional in your marriage and home, it's not the same as what you gave to work that day necessarily, but you guys, the key to blending is that you gave your best while you were present in each of them. So the things that matter to you got space in your day. Okay, let me give a second example. This is a new mama who happens to love moving her body. So you're excited because you're in a new season of life. You've prayed for this, like you've wanted this, you've envisioned being a mama forever. And you also recognize that like this past version of you really loved moving her body every day. And so it's kind of hard because you're like, I used to do this and now I do this. Like <laughs> I used to sweat and now it's like spit up all over me. Um, bless your heart, first of all. But here's a little scenario. So you're in this season, postpartum mama used to, let's say you used to give an hour every day for moving your body. You were like hardcore, CrossFit, gym, all the things. But you can't seem to carve out that same time anymore in this new role as mama. So friends, this doesn't mean you're balancing wrong. So we have to, first of all, stop beating ourselves up um, in comparison to a past version of ourselves when we can't even compare that. Like I see time and time again, new mamas compare themselves to like when they were in their twenties <laughs> and I'm like, that's precious. That's like apples and oranges. You are comparing two totally different things. You can't do that. Right? So we have to stop beating ourselves up when we compare past versions of us that are never coming back because you've grown, you've evolved, you, you are a new thing, Right? So instead of comparing ourselves and, and getting really down about how we can't give the same time slot anymore, maybe it means that in this new season, you blend movement with mom life. 
Maybe it's a family walk with your baby in tow on your favorite trail every Saturday. Um, maybe the maybe your new child watches you work out while you have them kind of by your side as you're doing your thing. And yeah, maybe that involves like pressing pause. Like maybe you have to do home workouts. I don't know. And, and you got to press pause. But like what a gift that you can do that, right? Um, I don't know what it looks like for you, but just because movement didn't get space every day or doesn't get space every day in this new season doesn't mean that it doesn't matter to you. It might just need less time than before. So just like I said, in balance, it's rigid. It doesn't shift with our seasons. But when you blend, you can acknowledge, okay, what matters most to me in the season? And now being a new mama matters. You didn't have that on your plate before. So now we have to adjust and kind of ask ourselves, how can what matters most actually be present at some point in my week, right? Okay, one last one before I wrap up. What about the person who just got like a new job or a new home um, and like the combining of a social life? So you just landed this new job, your new home, and your priorities are shifting. Maybe you used to hang out with friends every Friday night. It was like, that was your jam. That's what you did. And then you got this new job or bought a home and all of a sudden your priorities have shifted in life. Friday nights maybe got nixed in pursuit of more rest or maybe saving money. And if you're anything like me, at some point, you probably have some friends who've been trying to make you feel bad for not hanging out, that you've changed or you're different. This doesn't mean you're a terrible friend and that you need to pile socializing onto an already full plate in a brand new season with new things. This, to me, is a clue that your priorities are shifting. Home has become a priority. Rest after a long week has uh, become a priority. Saving money has become a priority. And friends, that's cool. <laughs> like, that's so cool. You're growing. So honor that. Be proud of the growth that is happening in your own journey. It's hard when you're growing in your journey and maybe a social circle is not. And I get that. But you can blend those in because they matter to you now. Just like I said before, as seasons shift, so do your priorities. Um, and if, like I said, if those friends are the kind you want to keep around into this next chapter, simply shift the way you show up, shift the way you hang out. Maybe it looks like game nights and people bring over like something to eat and drink. And my friends and I, we have this fun thing that we used to do. We do like a dinner night once a week and everybody was in charge of a different thing each week. So you know, one week you'd be in charge of the drinks and one couple would be in charge of the main course and another would be in charge of dessert. And then, you know, we'd shift and rotate who was in charge of which piece and we'd pick like a theme for that. And it was, it was super fun. Um, and we got really creative with that, but it was a cheaper way than like going out to get dinner and drinks every week. Right. And it also brought us together with better conversations. We were invited into each other's homes as you're growing and evolving. Doesn't mean that you can't bring your social life and your friends along with you as priorities shift. Maybe it just looks like getting creative and trying something new. And here's the deal permission granted. If that friend group isn't one that's serving the direction of your priorities, it's okay to make space. This is, like I said, how blending becomes organic and fluid as our lives ebb and flow. So to wrap up, simply put, I think balance is a myth. Life will feel imbalanced, and that's actually okay. That's part of the whole journey. That's what makes the highs feel really high and the lows sometimes feel really stinking low. And we do need the teetering of both. We need work to fulfill us sometimes and also challenge us. And we need life to be both beautiful and brutal. My One of my favorite authors, Glennon Doyle, says brutal, um, that life is brutal. And I love that because it's in that contrast, my friends, that we're human. So I encourage you to ask this week what matters most in this season right now, where I am. And then I challenge you to honor that and blend your life according to your answer. Allow what matters to get space in your world, if even just a sliver. All right, guys, I'll see you next week for another midweek motivation. If you loved this one, hit subscribe, share it, comment below. I love hearing what is sticking out for you and how you're applying it to your life. All right, see you next week, friends.